should do is not mess with my dreams. Where'd you get that keyboard? I have no idea how this machine found its way onto the dirt floor of a building in the middle of the woods. Honestly, I don't want to know. I'll spare you the nightmare of what it was like to get it back here. You probably wouldn't believe me anyway. What's that famous Archimedes quote? Something like, give me a place to stand and a lever long enough and I will move the world. <laughs> the world. That could be this machine's nickname. 12 tool changer. 6,000 RPM spindle. You may be asking yourself, why would I even get this? Well, I may have a plan. The real answer is why not? I don't know if anyone else does this, but when I find some piece of information or something that's missing from the internet, I tend to want to fill that void. There just aren't a lot of videos on old machines like this, and I thought you might want to know a little bit about it. Unlike my tiny Cortini CNC mill over there, this one still works. No Raspberry Pi needed, sort of. Came with more tool holders than I know what to do with. Almost a complete set of collet chucks for this guy. And a chip conveyor that I will likely never make use of. So there's a little bit of wiring and electronics in this thing. And I've pretty much got it all figured out now. This is for controlling the spindle and the uh, AC spindle motor. So that whole section there, which is pretty crazy. And you got a bunch of relays and stuff on this side that control various things and some wiring. On this side, you've got these two stepper drivers. I don't know if you remember in the other video, but you know, it takes a step pin and a direction pin. I'm pretty sure these do the exact same thing, but they're just a little bit bigger because the motors are a little bit bigger. This machine was also wired up for 220 when I first got it, so I had to switch it over to 208. So I had to change this transformer. I think there's a switch on there somewhere. This transformer and this one. It's pretty simple. I don't think there's anything else. Over here you've got the memory and different stuff for displaying things on the CRT. And we've got the power supply. And one cool thing is this actually, at one point, I don't use it, as a tape reader. They actually came with punch tape where they actually have holes physically punched in them, which is crazy. But I'm running it off RS-232. So that brings me to my next point. How do you actually program this thing or run programs on it? Well, way back in the day, people would actually stand here and program it line for line or they would physically just use one of the punch tapes and have no program. The memory would just be in the tape as it's running, which is crazy. Now it's a little bit different. Step one, design the part you want to make. Cylindrical shape is preferred, but not required. How about this inanimate aluminum rod? Okay, maybe make something a little bit cooler than that. That's better. Step two, create a tool path. This is the path your tool edge will take to cut away the material that isn't your part. Step 3. Use your post processor. This is the file that converts your tool path into usable information for your machine controller. In my case, the Fanuc 6T. This is the G code you always hear about. Send that code to another computer. Since this machine was around before the Clinton administration, it's lacking some connectivity. So normally I'd be using that computer, which is dedicated to talking to this thing, but it decided to die. Use that computer to talk to yet another computer, this time inside the machine. It's more like a block of memory that you're sending the characters to. It's not very many bits per second, but if you think that's slow, try doing it by hand. For whatever reason, the last couple of lines of the code didn't get put in, and that tends to happen. Uh, everything else seems to be there, so I'm just going to enter it in manually. Whew. Wouldn't want to do that for 310 lines. Now that you've run about 100 different dry runs with your finger nervously on the e-stop button, 
and you're feeling brave enough, it's time to cut. In a world of chaos and disorder, this machine brings balance, trading entropy for precision. Seeing its true potential, the thought of limitless, perfectly cylindrical objects started to grow in Sean's brain. No, I'm not done with this video yet. It's not time yet. He tried to resist. Not a third person voiceover. We don't do those. If only he could get to the disconnect. But it was too late. Sean fell silent with obsession. The artificial urge to produce small cylindrical parts took over. The machine had worked its way into his head, holding Sean hostage. He was now just a shell of a human performing simple tasks. Move the stock, start the machine, wait. Move the stock, start the machine, wait. Hmm, you lost another one. It's a shame, really. No matter how many times I see this play out, the outcome is always the same. Of course, we can't interfere but it's never easy to watch. I know you would like me to give you more information. I really do hate leaving you in the dark, but we just don't have all the pieces of this puzzle. So once again, we push on, keep searching, looking for something to steer us in the right direction. Fortunately, time is an afterthought, a non-issue, at least for some of us. How can I be so sure? That's the beauty of it, it doesn't matter. We'll keep on keeping on, and one day, maybe, we'll find out just what the hell is going on. But until then, just remember, it's only when we wake up that we realize something was actually strange. something truly out of this world for you today. Believe me folks, this ain't no gimmick. Now before I get to it, remember, you can subscribe, like the video, and become a patron. It's totally up to you. Since you all stuck around to the bitter end, feast your eyes on this extraordinary gem, the space-time spinner. This isn't just any ordinary spinning top, my friends. This is a piece of history from another world. From the far off reaches of a dimension, FE294302. Isn't that wonderful? That's right, folks. The original owner of this miraculous marvel has retired, leaving behind this unbelievable artifact of interdimensional wonder. And now, this can be yours. What do you think, mysterious, nameless entity that never identifies itself? My thoughts exactly. Also, do you control the arm or is that like its own thing? No response? <laughs> okay, uh, folks, this is not a gimmick. You don't need to comment down below. You can really buy it. And the best part, it starts at just $1. That's right, just $1. Please help me, I'm trapped in this room and I don't know how to get out. <laughs> I know, I know, it's almost too good to be true. But here's the real kicker. Only for 10 of these sold, then the price doubles. You heard it right. So, after we sell the first 10 at $1, the price becomes $2 for the next 20. Sell those, and it becomes $4 for the next 40. And that pattern will continue forever, so you see, the earlier you call, the better deal you get. So don't wait, my friends. Don't wait. This isn't just a spinning top, folks. It's a piece of another reality. Imagine the stories you could tell 
the Space Time Spinner could be yours for just one dollar. Remember, every ten sold, it'll go up. So get on those phones now, folks. I'm serious. I'm trapped in this room. I've been here for years. You need to help me. <laughs> Call now, folks. Call now. Don't miss this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to own a piece of another dimension. This is not a gimmick. This is the Space Time Spinner from SH Shopping Network. Buy it now! The Space Time Spinner, the ultimate memento from another dimension. Get yours today. Seriously, please help me.